welcome to the ninth reading of my memoir, The Innocence of Guilt. Witches and Other Ladies One day, the past dared to converse with the present at our house. A huge shock when I opened the front door. Two witches, straight from the curious framed photographs in the trunk, stood in the doorway, dressed in the same sombre black dresses and black hats they wore in the strange old photos. Gone was any desire on my part to become acquainted with them. Through the hallway, into the back room, out into the garden I ran, shutting myself in the shed which could be bolted from the inside. Nothing would persuade me to leave it. My mother came outside at one point during their visit and tried to entice me out. I screamed at her, so she left me there. After they left and I ventured back inside the house, Mum said how embarrassed she had been, trying to explain over a cup of tea why they couldn't meet me. Then she said in angry resignation, Oh well, doesn't really matter. They're only from Gilbert's side of the family. I don't suppose we'll ever see them again. They only came to check me out and find out who he married. Well, now they know, don't they? Across the street lived an elderly lady whom we often visited. Her big corner detached house, set amongst a rambling garden of bushes and flowers surrounded by a hedge, boasted the fancy name of Lambarn Croft. Mrs Barnard was the closest I came to having a grandmother, in the sense that she showed an interest in me. One day I mentioned my frequent nightmares. She bent down, stared intently at me, and asked me what I ate before bed each night. Cheese sandwiches, I piped up. That's your problem, dear. Cheese gives you bad dreams. You tell that mother of yours not to feed you any more cheese sandwiches at bedtime and you'll be fine. I related this wise piece of advice to my mother, but she only said, silly old fool, and that was the end of that. She didn't like the idea that Mrs Barnard thought she knew better than her how to raise me, so our visits became less frequent and the nightmares continued. My mother's friends never visited her. I don't have time for them to come to my house or for me to go to theirs. I've far too much work to do, she always said indignantly. Then she'd spend time nattering away to Mrs Sadler over the fence while I hung on to her apron, listening to every word. She never talked to Mrs Whitten at the end house for reasons known only to her. Mrs. Sadler took in washing. Her apron always seemed to be drenched with the stench of washing water made from strong carbolic soap. All the socialization went on around jobs being done or the pretense of, hanging out the washing or polishing the front steps with cardinal red doorstep polish. All the housewives on the street considered their doorsteps a source of great pride and usually went out to polish them at the same time each day so they could have a guilt-free natter. Whenever I went out with my mother, the ladies she knew, whom we bumped into, made a huge fuss over me. They gave me nicknames. Because I was small for my age, one of them called me Little Chocolate Box as I wore my brown hair cut by my father in a straight bob with a fringe, finished off with a freshly ironed bow of ribbon on the top. Every day, a different coloured ribbon. Another lady called me Little Jenny Wren after the well-loved little bird. I liked these affectionate names. Jennifer sounded much too pretentious, and the fact that my father only called me by my proper name when he was cross with me reinforced my attraction to the abbreviated version of Jenny. One lady we met offered to pay for me to take tap dancing lessons at the dance school her daughter attended. 
She gave me a pair of black tap shoes, which I adored, but I refused to go with her when she came to pick me up for the class. I shook like jelly and clung on to my mother. Despite my ability to move to music, I was no Shirley Temple, or I would not have let anything stop me. Two missed opportunities to follow my dream, one on the Hippodrome stage and the other at a local dance school. Fear is a powerful force that can stop you in your tracks, even if you desire with all your heart to move forward. It can cripple you as much as any physical illness. Along with guilt, which attached itself to me so early in my life, fear also took my hand and latched onto me like a controlling friend. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to subscribe, like or comment on this reading and hopefully you will tune in to the next one. Bye for now.